Hey guys, and welcome to the new video in this C++ tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about the C++ documentation um, because it is so important and probably one of the most important aspects to learn and master in programming in general and also in C++. Because it's so important that we can look up documentation and we know where to find documentation and then we can apply that uh, that thing we we'll read in our documentation in our code. Because it's impo it's, it's impo really literally impossible to know everything about uh, programming and uh, and the different programming languages. So it's so it's so important that we know how we can look it up or if we have some different kind of problems like how we can look it up in the documentation and then apply it in a fast way to our program. So first of all, I'm going to show you like. Uh, the, the, the documentation for C++ that I use the most and I found like um, find like the most important um, important one. So first of all we have this C++.com website here which has like some different kind of uh, documentation where they have some tutorials on how we can do C++ and also some references to the different types of implementations of the functions and also data structures and like that. And first of all, if you just come here to like the start uh, start page here on the website, we can get some different kind of information of C++. A brief, brief description of C++, the history of C++, and, and stuff, uh, stuff like that. And then over here to the left, we have like some different kind of options. We can either like have some tutorials, like tutorials on how to how to use C++ and how to get started with C++. And then we have the reference here, which is the kind of like uh, the documentation that I'm going to show, like how we can use that uh, documentation or references to some of the built-in stuff that is that, that are in the C++. And how we can look it up, implement it in our code, and, and do it in a fast way and really efficient way. So, and then we also have some articles and the forum here. So let's go into references here. And first of all, we can see that we just get like the standard C++ library reference, where first of all they're uh, all like the C++ um, like the C libraries are listed first with some of the containers, and we get some input output stream library as an atomic and thread, uh, threading library and some other different kind of stuff. So these are like the headers um, or like the different kind of libraries that you can that you can include in your in your C++ program and then you can use some of the built-in functions from those libraries uh, here where some of them we have already seen this tutorial it could be like for example algorithm um, which had which is a standard template library, library for algorithms and if we go into this one we can see that there's some a lot of different kind of functions that are already implemented um, by using um, algorithms. We can like for example shuffle a, 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 a list or like we can random shuffle um, elements in a list or like a vector and we can also do some remove values from a range and we can sort we can use the sort function if we have an unsorted list or unsorted vector then we can just call this function here sort with some, with some parameters and then it will sort the um, sort our like a range in an ascending or descending order which, which uh, depends on what we want and we can also like sort the elements in an array and find the end element um, in that sorted array and there are also some different other different kind of stuff with binary search merge heap like so there's many different functions and it's impossible to know all of these functions and this is only the function from one of the built-in uh, libraries that you can uh, that you can include so it's, it's literally just impossible to know all of these functions here and you won't work with a lot of them for for a lot of time and you won't remember like how we can use those functions and that they even exist so it's so important in, in programming and just in general and also in C++ that we know where we can look up the documentation and where we can find the functions, see what the function does and what parameters they take, what return values they, they have and then apply that in our code in a really fast way. So, so it's just really important that we can look up documentation first, read it, understand it and then use it and then, then we're really good programming and we're, 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 we're good to go. So one of the examples here, like this is just one of the one of the um, one of the like libraries that you can in, uh, implement and like include. You can also include the random library, some string library, memory libraries that can do different kind of stuff. Like here, we can allocate memory to some different kind of stuff, and we can have these um, shared pointers and the, like the the smart pointers that we talked about in one of the previous videos, which is implemented in this memory library here. And then we can implement uh, implement those included, and we can go into the documentation see what can we do with the, with the unique pointer for example we can click into it we will get a short uh, description of what a unique pointer is here um, if we don't know what a real uh, like what a, what a unique pointer is like we can, we can first get a, like a short introduction to what it is and how we can use it and then there's some different kind of template parameters uh, member types which is not, really, not really important stuff but then under here we can see that some of the member functions that we can use on the unique pointer and we can see that we can swap content in a unique pointer, reset, release, uh, get the pointer, and stuff like that. We can also have like this 
these different kind of operators, like how we can dereference an object with the star operator and the, and the error operator, which we also talked about in, in one of the previous videos. So there is a lot of different kind of stuff. And one of the examples I wanted to show is um, the container, the vector container in C++, like how we can see um, what different what different types of member functions there are and some of the functions um, that we can apply to our um, to our vector. So we can go up here to the search um, field here and we can type in vector if we want to find documentation for a vector. We can also go over here to the list where in the references where we can see that we know that a vector is in container. So we can just hit this, hit this plus sign here and it will show all the containers that are already implemented in C++. So these are like the data structures. Like I also have a, um, a tutorial on algorithms of data structures where we've implemented some of these data structures here um, from the beginning or like from scratch where in C++ they're already implemented and they're so good like debug. So it is probably like the best uh, data structure implementations that you can get by just using using the default or like the built-in um, data structures. So we can see like the different kind of data structures here where we've been over like different types of like maps and queues, list, uh, link, list, arrays, um, a stack and a queue, vector. So let's go into the vector container here and see what, what it is. So first of all, we can see that there's two two classes here. So we can have, for example, have a vector and we can have a vector of booleans. And it has two functions here, like just the original vector with the begin and end. And then if we go into one of the classes here, for example, like the vector class here, then again, we will get a short uh, in a description of um, what a vector is and how it can be used and, and how it like it's, it's, it's like, and how it works in C++ and how it's implemented in words. So, and then after that, it, we, we get some container properties, like what are, what are the properties for this container type here with the vector. So one of the properties is that it is a sequence. So the elements in, in the sequence container are ordered in a strict linear sequence. So this is like kind of array, but it also have this dynamic array here. So the individual elements are accessed by their position in the sequence. So this is like the zero index. So if we want to get the, the zero element in our vector, we can just um, access this by the, by the zero uh, position in the in the container. And then there's also a dynamic array, so it lies direct access to any element in the sequence, even th even though like even through a pointer arithmetic and provides relatively fast addition removal of elements at the end of the sequence. And it also has like some allocator aware. So it can, it can like dynamically handles the storage. So it can like, we have like, we can say that it is like a dynamic array um, with the vector here. And then it has some template parameters and stuff like that. But here down here in the bottom is the, like the more important things where we have these member functions that, that are implemented and we can use on our vector. And a vector is probably like one of the most used data, data structures in, in C++ and like just in, in, in general programming with lists. So we have these different kind of member functions here that we can apply to the vector. So let's say we want to like, for example, iterate through our, our whole uh, vector. Then we have some different kind of iterators here where um, we can return an iterator to the beginning of our list or the end of a list if we want to sort our vector. And we can also do it in reverse order or like have a const iterator to our vector. And we also have some capacity member functions where if we want to get like, for example, um, the size of our vector or like we want to resize the vector or get the capacity. So it's not obvious, it's, it's not really like true that the size uh, is equal to the capacity because we can have allocated some capacity uh, to our vector, but it only contains a couple of elements. And then the couple of elements will be the size of our vector. And we can also reserve some capacity for a vector or like allocate some memory to a vector uh, before we use it. And we also have some different kind of uh, element access operators where we have like these brackets here. Um, these brackets here to access the elements uh, at some uh, um, position or index. And we can also use some of the other elements, uh, element access elements operators here with the front and back if we want to get the first or the last element. And some different kind of modifiers here where we can push back an element to the end of our vector or swap the content in our vector in place back clear. If we want to like clear or erase our vector um, totally, um, so there's a lot of different kind of functions here that we can use on the vector. And if we just take like, if we just take the first one here with the size here, we can see that now we're inside the vector, like the vector documentation here. And then we have, we're going down to the member functions. Like we, we want to, we want to know um, how this size, uh, size member function here of the vector, it can be, how it can be used. 
So first of all, we can read that the return size here it returns the number of elements in the vector and the number of actual objects held in the vector, which is not necessarily equal to historic capacity. So in two lines of code, we could two lines of code. We already know what this function does here, and then we can see that uh, it takes no parameters to the function, so we can just apply it directly to the vector, no parameters, and then the the return value for calling this function here is the number of elements in a, in a container. And then often when we're looking up some of the member functions that we can use on the different kinds of containers or in, in like sorting or in algorithm, like implemented algorithms in C++ as well, there will often be like an example of how we can use um, that function or that container um, as well. So it is really important that they're, they're like they're showing an example and, and then the really simple examples. So in this case here, they're just having four examples here where they have four different cases and they just call this a size uh, this size function here on a vector and then we can see what what it outputs as well so it's really good to get a quick overview over what this function or a function does in c++ by just going into the documentation seeing a short or and simple example here with some different kind of cases and then you can see like how you can implement this in your code or for your for, for your example um, so it's really really important that that is just like set up so easily and it's just like from from the from the top to the beginning where we have first have like a short description the parameter that it takes the return value and a short example and we don't need any anything else we just need to like uh, just go get a quick overview over what the function does and then we can go into our code again implement it and and some of this m might be obvious to you guys if you're using like C++ a lot um, with the with the vector and like different kind of member functions on the vector but in some of the other libraries or on like for example an unordered map and stuff like that like it's not obvious and it's not really like it, it just, it's just impossible to know every member functions and every implemented um function that, that is built in and, and all the libraries that you can include like it's just Im impossible to know all of those things here and and even though you're really good at programming you you also just need how you need to learn how to read up documentation and how to use it and also like professional or um, um, professional um, programmers and even programmers at Google and Facebook and stuff like that, they're using documentation all the time for, for all the stuff they're doing because they, they want to make sure that, that they're making the best implementation and they know every every like line of code they, they write, like they need to know what it does and they need to know it like down on a really low level. So this is a good thing to like look up the documentation and apply it and then just like make your programs as, as good as possible. So this is the this is the side I use most for um, for documentation of C++. Um, there's also some different uh, other different kinds, but I, I really like this side here because it is so it is so uh, like user friendly. You have like a list over here to the left, or you can just go through um, with the containers, the C library, input output. If you want to do some multi threading in your program as, program as well, like you can just go over here and click onto it, and then you will get in into here. You will get a short OU or like what this header contains and then you can go into a class you again you just get a really short and quick overview and it, and, it, and you and you really like know how to apply it after you're, you've been over like the, just skimming like just skimming the documentation here you then know what it does and how to use it and you can see them all the memo functions listed up here with the names and then a short um, a short description of what the function does and then you can just apply that to your code so it's really intuitive and a really um, friendly and beginning uh, beginner beginner group uh, documentation tutorial or like site here but there's also some other different kinds where like we have this c++ reference in a more like a new uh, new way but i still like the old one uh, a bit more because it is just set up so good and it's just really user friendly but you can also go in here and 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 for example search for the vector container um, again and you could go in here and see exactly the same stuff but i just think it's set up more easily for a beginner or like it just gets you a better overview on the on the on the previous website that I showed you, but this just shows the same thing with the member functions and some short uh, descriptions and stuff like that. And Microsoft also has their um, documentation or like um, they, like their C plus plus language documentation that they they often use as well, where they this they still have the scroll bar over here to the left where you can see some different kind of stuff and. It basically like shows the same thing as, as some of the other like websites that showed you where you can go in here and and get like for example a brace here and it will you get a short introduction and often you will get more like complex and more details example here on the Microsoft uh, documentation website for C++ but the other ones are like more simple and and if you just want to like look up documentation really fast 
and you, you probably haven't used it before or it's just a long time ago like you, you get a much faster overview on the, on the on the first one i showed you here and then you can just go apply that to your code where if you want more detailed description and more detailed examples if you're if you're starting with learning out or you're going to use like a new function new functions or like new um new headers and libraries then you have you, you, you get a more detailed description in here uh, on the microsoft side and if you're really new to to the thing you're looking up so thank you guys for watching this video and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification on the video and also like this video if you like the content and you want more of it in the future if you want to like apply some of these things that you learn in this c++ tutorial i'm also doing a, a c++ tutorial in algorithms and data structures and also a more practical one in computer vision um, where we're using OpenCV to do some different kinds of stuff with camera calibration and, and object detection and all stuff like that. So if you want to apply some of these things in a more practical way, you can go check one of the tools up. I'll link to one of them up here or else I'll just see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.